Well, Rob's doing a solo album next yep. year. So, yeah. I, I'm, I mean, I'm assuming... He's at this in point, and out, doesn't he? Okay, well, there, there was a reason out. for that, actually, because it's not, it's not just to get that out of you. But as far as one little girl was concerned, her dad was the sixth member okay. of Take That for a while. <laughs> A Million Love Songs was the sixth single to be released from Take That's debut album, Take That and Party, out in 1992. Now, the boy band had yet to become the chart-topping megastars they turned out to be, but the single peaked at number seven on the UK chart and was their second top ten hit. But the song was destined to find a place in people's hearts, helped in no little part by the searing saxophone riff that makes it so distinctive. In 1990, manager Nigel Martin-Smith decided to form a British group who could rival the success of New Kids on the Block. Gary Barlow's songwriting abilities quickly won him a place in the group and soon four more members were found. Howard, Jason, Mark and Robbie. Their music producer, Ian Levine, was looking for a romantic sound that would complement the sentimental song. He turned to jazz saxophonist, Snake Davis. How did you get to work with Take That? I didn't realise I was getting involved with them, really, because <laughs> it was just one take, you know, quick listen to the backing track, headphones on, play and record, and, and off you go. I'm pretty sure it was a one-take thing, so I just, just literally just played it once. In fact, I clearly remember asking if I could just perhaps go in again and re replace a couple of things, because there is one out-of-tune note in there. Just before Gary comes in, there's a big... Don't tell us where it yeah, is. Right. <laughs> <laughs> How did they present the song live? When I first saw it on TV, there was, there was an imposter, there was a stand-in <laughs> miming my part, and <clears throat> I was sad. Yeah, but then you got to play with the band. I got in touch with them and said, well, listen, you, you know, it's, it's my song and it's very me, and if there was a chance, do you think perhaps I could come and do the TVs? And they said, yeah. So then I took over. That first album went double platinum, so are you now minted? I worked it out actually when um, when it got so famous because I got a couple of hundred quid for the session, which works out about seventeen or eighteen quid for um, for mini loss. <laughs> wow! How do you feel about the song now? Now I'm sort of even prouder than ever of my involvement in it. And I think it's lovely that it's become so big and that they've become so big, and. Um, it's great when things get a second life. And my daughter, who's 16, she sent me a text and said, Dad, it's so beautiful what you played, you know. I've, I've listened to that intro 20 times. I thought, yeah, that's it. That's, that's, <laughs> that, that sort of meant more than anything to me, really. In 2010, A Million Love Songs was voted the greatest love song ever and continues to play a key part in the band's live act since they reformed in 2005. Snake has gone on to make his mark as a solo artist, but the riff that sets the track ablaze will always be his, imperfections and all. The sixth member of Take That there. Gorgeous. Do you know what? That's lovely seeing that clip, though. It's great. So, uh, listen, yeah. take that, you've got a DVD 